This is a significant and pivotal day in the case against Richard Allen, the prime suspect in the murder of two Delphi teenagers, Abby Williams and Libby German. Today begins jury selection, and our Caitlin Kendall will be at the courthouse covering this part. A big day ahead. What are we expecting? We're expecting a lot. This is going to be the first day of almost an entire month of trial expected. The first three days are going to be in Allen County. The jury is coming from Allen County. This is the Fort Wayne area. The jury will come from there. They will be sequestered to Carroll County, which which is of course where Delphi is and we're going to hear a lot of testimony. We're going to the first few days of jury selection will be a little bit slow moving. It'll kind of feel for people at home who are trying to figure out what's happening. But once we have our jury, that's kind of when the ball is rolling. We're expecting to see, of course, Abby Williams and Libby German's families there, as well as a number of other media outlets and of course the general public who's interested in the case. It's taken more than seven years to get to this point <laughs> since the murders of Abby and Libby. And what we want to keep in perspective here, and we are in intentionally doing so here at WRTV is that this is about finding justice for those two little girls who really had their whole lives ahead of them but were so tragically taken away from this world. We're talking 13 and 14 years old. That's how old they were when these crimes happened. And I was a little intern in the news business when this first started in Indianapolis. And I remember covering it and just kind of the emotions that you feel being out at the scene when the girls were first reported missing on that February 13th. They didn't have school that day. The girls had a sleepover the night before. They were best friends. Mm -hmm. And to see see how it went from the girls missing to sadly ultimately we know that Valentine's Day their bodies being discovered just off the bone on High Bridge Trail. It just turned into this moment where so many members of the community were just remembering who these girls were and I think that's what's so important. You know at the end of the day there's been a lot of things that have happened in this trial. There's been so much speculation. It's been a media circus for a lack of better term. So many people just trying to get their hands on this trying to understand what's happening that so often it's so easy to see all of that and forget that we have two girls whose lives were sadly tragically taken and families of not just Abby Williams and Libby German, but the accused suspect Richard Allen, his family also waiting for this trial that's been kind of in the works for over a year. Uh, uh, during the time that you've been you know, sticking to this and covering it so closely, you've had a chance to talk with the families and you've also learned a little bit about the personalities of each of those girls and their interests. Yeah. What did you learn? So much. These girls were absolutely beautiful, both inside and out. I never obviously had the chance to meet them, but from what their families say, they were just outstanding young girls. Abby was interested in crafts and knitting, and she loved stray cats. We were told her mom actually was allergic to them, but she would be like, Mom, Mom, let me have the cats and bring the cats in. So a caring spirit. So a yeah. caring spirit. Um, she was expected to start the softball season for the first time because, as many people know, Libby German was an avid softball player. She loved playing softball, loved her family. She was a baker. She was a helper. But both of these girls' friendships started in the school band. Um, they both played the alto sax together. And so there's just so many things about these girls that you want to remember, right? You want to remember that these were just two teenagers, 13 and 14, who were kind of navigating life, but by each other's side. Their friendship, I think, has been the one constant thing that has kind of shined throughout all of this. Everyone is going to talk about how their kids are tremendous kids, right? But this friendship really seemed like something special. Mm -hmm. Libby wanted to go on to be a science teacher one day, and she was really interested in crimes and investigating. And of course, we do know that Libby did capture that cell phone video that's going to be key evidence in this case. And so you just have to wonder sometimes if are the girl's interest playing a role and what will happen at the mm -hmm. end of this. You know, was that cell phone video because Libby was interested in crime and finding things out, did her cell phone video allow, you know, the state to find the people responsible or the person responsible? And in those years that we were searching for the suspect, we were able to talk with the family quite often. Mm -hmm. But since this has become an official court case, uh, there has been some limitations in speaking with relatives. Yeah. How has that impeded the coverage of the, of the case? It's, it's been difficult. You know, oftentimes you're in the courtroom with family, and we're not just talking about family of Abby Williams and Libby German. Richard Allen's wife and his mother have been at every single court appearance. You can't talk to those people. They're not allowed to talk it. They're under a gag order, if you will. So they're not allowed to talk about the case, anything to do with the case. And that unfortunately includes speaking about their loved ones. And so there's been so many times where we want to just ask the family, how do you feel about this? Or what has happened here? Or how are you feeling now that we're finally going to trial? And unfortunately, we're not given that opportunity to do so. You know, I've had just sidebar conversations, nothing to do with the case, but just how are you mm -hmm. to Abby Williams and Libby German's family? Because they've packed the courtroom in every single court 
court date, at least three rows um, have been filled with Abby and Libby's family. And, you know, they're excited to hopefully see some sort of justice, but at the end of the day, they're both still all grieving. And, and there's been plenty of times in testimony that has been leading up to this and pre-trial testimony that we've heard and we've seen the family already get emotional. And so this is obviously going to be a tough time on their perspective of seeing crime scene photos, hearing what happened to the girls because they've already been super emotional in the court hearings that we have had. And then there's Richard Allen's family. Of course, he is the man who's up to stand trial for these girls' murders. And, you know, the very first court date, I will never forget this conversation I had with Kathy Allen, which is Richard Allen's wife. And I just bent down next to her because so many people are talking about her husband. Mm -hmm. So many people are talking about this man who's up um, to stand trial for a double murder um, in Delphi, Indiana. And I just told her, hang in there. You know, it's a brief conversation. And she looked at me and said, he's my person. I don't know how I can leave him. And so you I think it puts it into perspective of, the two families here that are now hoping, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to see justice for Abby Williams and Libby German, regardless of who that is. Right, and this has just touched so yeah. many different families. You've had a chance to visit Delphi on a number of occasions, and this crime in this case has really affected that place as a community itself. I was just talking the other day about how being in the area when they first went missing, the emotions that you felt, kind of the atmosphere, it was this this type of thing doesn't happen in Delphi, Indiana. If you're not familiar with Delphi, Indiana, it's such a small town mm -hmm. just outside of Lafayette. It's the kind of town where we truly say everybody knows everybody, and they really do. Everybody knows everybody. And so when this happened, people were shocked. People didn't understand, how can this happen in my town? And for so long, before we had a suspect behind bars, everyone was looking over their shoulder. So many people in the community talk about, you know, I had to lock my doors. I never locked my doors before. Delphi, Indiana, we don't need to lock our doors. So many people just changed their perspective not only on life but the community that they lived in and so even if they knew abby and libby or they didn't know abby and libby their perspective on so many things changed in delphi all the way through all of this right i mean when all the media personnel come in town for these trials and they're frequenting these businesses and they're talking to people everybody feels connected to this case in delphi because it's such a small town and you have that close-knit community and so i mean you hit it right on the head the fact that everybody feels touched by this case especially in delphi it's true. Over the next several weeks, uh, we're going to hear names in these cases. Tell us a little bit about some of the key players that we should know. There's a couple of things that we are not going to be able to hear. Of course, uh, Special Judge Fran Gull, she's the judge that's been appointed to this case. She is based out of Allen County, so the mm -hmm. Supreme Court appointed her to, to this case to be the judge. She's going to be a name that you guys will hear a lot. Um, mm -hmm. She is obviously the one who's kind of the face of this, if you will, of order, law and order, when we're talking about that right. up on the stand. And then you also have Brad Rosie and Andrew Baldwin, which are Richard Allen's attorneys. Richard Allen, again, the man accused in this case. And then on the state side, we have prosecutor Nicholas McLeland, and he is kind of the face for the prosecution team. They have a team. There's two other attorneys on their team helping them here, but those are kind of the main names that you'll hear. There's a number of witnesses that'll take to the stand. Um, and just a few things that, you know, I think as the trial plays out and as we start to see more things, witnesses come to the stand, we'll have a better idea of what the evidence is and why this man is up for trial. A big case in the search for justice here. You'll want to follow uh, Caitlin's reports. We'll have them here on, online at WRTV.com, on the WRTV app, here on air, and of course on Caitlin's social media and the WRTV social media channels. It is a journey, but I'm excited, of course, to bring you guys the very latest updates on all platforms. Caitlin, so. thank you.